In this video, we're going to learn how to create a form using Ninja Forms. So the first thing we need to do is get into our Ninja Forms dashboard by clicking on Ninja Forms on the left-hand menu and making sure that we're on the dashboard screen. So it should look like this, and you're gonna have this contact me sample form, but I wanna go through some of the other additional form fields with you, so we're gonna create a brand new form. Now there's some templates that you can choose from if you want to see how some of the form fields work and stuff like that. These are provided by Ninja Forms that come with the plugin. But I'm going to create a blank form. And here we go. So this is our Ninja Forms workspace. We have our work area on the left where we're going to see our actual form as we build it. And on the right hand side is all of the available fields. Now, a lot of these are fairly self-explanatory, so I'm gonna show you some of the fields as we create a basic form and show you where different items are, right? So I think the best way to do it, let's just create a standard contact form. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a first name field, and we can just drag and drop these over to the left-hand side. And then if we click on the first name field, we're gonna get our options here on the right, okay? So the first thing is we can choose whether or not this should be a required field, and that means the field has to be filled out in order for the form to be submitted. So if you toggle this on, they have to fill out this field in order for the form to be submitted, right? And then we have help text. So this is for if, you know, if the field is a little bit more complicated and you want to give them some help instructions, we can put that in there. And then a description, so this would be this form field is for your first name. So that's just a description of the field. And then we have two other options, default value and placeholder. These are similar, but a little bit different. If you filled out other forms on the internet, you might've seen a placeholder, which is basically an example of what would be submitted in that field. But when you click on the actual input field, it disappears. So that's a placeholder and it's meant to just be kind of an example. Right? A default value actually means that that value will be submitted if the user doesn't touch the field. So when they click on the input field, that value does not disappear and it will be submitted if the user doesn't change it. So a default value is something you wanna get if the user doesn't fill out the field. A placeholder is to give the user an example. So I'm gonna leave this placeholder here. And that's basically it for your, your simple field. So we can see it on the left-hand side. We have all of our options here on the right. If I click on this toggle, let me just click done here. If I hover over this toggle, we can duplicate the field. So this is handy if you have a single line text field, which is a basic form field. And let's say you had a lot of similar fields and the only thing that was gonna change was the name of the field. We can set up the original field and then duplicate it to kind of save ourselves some time. And we can also delete the field by hitting the trash icon. So if we hit that plus icon in the bottom right, it's gonna bring up all our available fields. So let's enter in an email field. And as you can see, you can drag and drop them or you can just click here and it will add the field. And we can drag and drop these to reorganize the field as needed. So let's click on our email field and we'll do the same thing. We'll make it required. We will uh, skip help text and description, but we'll put in a placeholder. So we'll say john at smith.com. And then we will click done, go back to our fields and we'll add in a paragraph text, which is a way to get like an actual message box. And that's usually what that's used for. So paragraph text, we'll click on that field and we'll say, we'll call that message. So if we change the label, that's gonna change what the name of the field is for the user. So if you didn't want this to say first name or email, you can change that to whatever you prefer. We'll make that required as well. And now we have a simple contact form. So really quickly, I wanna go through some of these other fields. So we have single checkbox, and that is a single checkbox field, which we could use to say, have somebody agree to our terms and conditions or something similar like that. And then we have these four fields here, checkbox list, multi-select, radio list, and select. And those are fields that you'll use if you wanna give somebody the ability to choose from certain values. So you want multiple options and they can either choose one or more of those options depending on which field it is. So checkbox list and multi-select, that allows your users to select one or more options, radio list and drop-down select, that allows your users to pick only one of the options. So 
So depending on how many you want them to fill out, uh, you can select which field you'd like. And the only difference between, say, checkbox list and multi-select, and then radio list and select, is the, the way that the interface looks. So the checkbox list would be checkboxes, and they can check one or more. Multi-select would give them a small window. They would see all the options, and by holding either the control key or the apple key, they can select more than one. Uh, radio list is the little circular uh, selectors where they you know, they click on the circle and it fills it up. That's called a radio button, and that's a radio list. And as they select a second option, the first one deselects, so they can only pick one. And a select is a drop-down field, which I'm sure that you've seen. Then we have paragraph text and single line text. This is a kind of uh, basically a simple field where you can call it whatever you want. So a single line text is for random fields, whatever you might need, but it's for one line or one, a short answer. A paragraph text is something like a message box where you're expecting multiple lines of text. Then we have user information fields, things like address and city and state and phone number and zip code and email address. And those are all just kind of formatting what's allowed to be entered into that box. And they all have their own kind of options, which you'll see on the right. Then we have pricing fields, and we're going to get that into a, in a separate video under calculating fields. And then we have layout fields. So our HTML field is mainly used if we want to, say, have a paragraph of text between fields we would use that HTML field. So you would just type in your paragraph text here, and that's just a way to kind of display text or information or instructions between fields within our form, and it allows basic HTML formatting. So for now, I will delete that, and I will also delete our checkbox list, and we'll go back. And a divider is just a way to create you know, different sections within your form. We can do that by using the divider, which will just put a dividing line between sections. And then we have some miscellaneous fields, hidden fields and CAPTCHA and anti-spam I'll cover in separate videos or tutorials. A numeric field is just a field where you're expecting to get a number. And the star rating is if you wanted to, say, create a review form, you would have, be able to add a star rating in so they could select you know, one through five. Uh, so that's basically it for form creation. It's pretty straightforward. You can play around with the fields, drag and drop them as needed, create your form, and then we'll go into emails and actions. And you can create more than one of these. So if you wanted, for example, when somebody fills out your form, multiple people to be emailed, you could set up multiple emails and actions for that. The success, let me just show you add a new one. So we have a couple options here. WordPress hook, that's more for developers. Email is to send an email, whether to the user that filled out the form or to an administrator or somebody else. A redirect is to redirect that user to a different WordPress page after they've submitted the form. Store submission means that the the form will be stored in the back end, so you'll be able to review all the submissions that uh, are, that users submit through your form. All of those entries will be stored and viewable in the back end. And then success message is just a text message that they are shown after they filled out the form. So, and then with some extensions, you can also add some other actions here, but we'll cover those separately. So for right now, we have a success message that is shown, and you can edit these by clicking on the the cog icon and you can change the message that's shown etc we can do the same thing with our admin email we can show where that email should go and we can also show which fields should be shown so with this fields table that's going to show all the fields from the form but if we click on this icon here we can also pick specific fields and what this allows us to do is if we wanted to format this email so we could do something like name and then go here and click first name it's going to have this in the email with whatever the name is here so we can format this email to kind of clean it up and we can also if the form has an email field so let's say we wanted to create an email that went out to the user so if I fill out the form they're going to get a copy of it and the way we do that is we have that merge tag icon again here so we can get rid of admin email and we can say whatever's in the email field, I'll just do that again. So this is the email field and it's here because we added an email field to our form. We click on that and then whatever the email address is, it's going to send the, the, 
the notification email to there. So if they filled out that form and they entered in their email address, if we use this to insert that email field into the to form, it's going to send that email to them. And then we can, again, we can change the subject line and we can format this any way that we would like to. So that's basically it after that. We have some advanced stuff, but we're gonna deal with that in other videos. So what we're gonna do is publish our form, give our form a title, have this toggle to add a submit button because there may be situations where you don't want your form to have a submit button, and then click on publish. And then we can close this down. We can go to our pages, click on add new, and we'll just say ninja form contact form. And then we can use this button here to add form, select the form that we just created, which is sample contact form, insert, click on publish. And then if we view that page on the front end, we should now see our ninja form and here it is. So you can see that this is our field label, the first name. This is our description. This form field is for your first name. And if I hover over this, you can see that's where your help text goes, right? So those, and now this is our placeholder. So you can see I put in John, but as soon as I type, it disappears. If that was a default value and I typed, we would see something like H John, right? It would just insert it, but it wouldn't remove what was put there. So normally you'll be using placeholders. And then we have our email field and our message. And if I submit this, I will get an email. Um, whatever email I put in here will get an email notification. I'll be shown some text and it will also store that submission so I can view them in the back end under submissions. They'll all be listed here. So if I selected a form and hit filter, it would show me all of the people that had filled out their form and what they input. And so that is the basics of creating a form with Ninja Forms. If you have any questions or run into any trouble, please do post in the Latte Press forums and somebody will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Check out the other videos in this series to see some of the more advanced stuff that we can do with our forms.